hey guys welcome to this video and in this video we will be going to look like how we can how we can use postgres as our storage database for uh, fabric cs server so we already know that fabric cs server provides a lot of integration with the databases like the default database that fabric ca use is sqlite and then we can switch between mysql and postgres so in this video we will be looking like how we can set up postgres with uh, Hyperledger Fabric CA and we will be also going to see like when we are enrolling or registering the users how our identities are stored into the database. So without any further ado, let's head back to the AWS console and by the way like I am going to use AWS RDS for my Postgres. So if you can use like any cloud provider or uh, you can use your local instance as well but the configuration is going to be a bit different for the local databases. But for simplicity, like I am using this AWS RDS instance, but in coming videos, like we will also try to have a look like how we can set up this Postgres locally and have those uh, verification and SL mode enabled. But as of now, like for this tutorial, like we are going to use AWS RDS. And so let's uh, open our AWS console. So right now you can see I am in my AWS console and let me here search for rds because first we have to create the instance so here is the rds let's just open it great now we can just create a database so here i'm going to choose the standard in in the in the engine option like i'm going to use postgres and here i am going to choose version 12.8 because that provides me a free tier option but the higher versions does not have currently free tier available so i'm going to use this 12.8 click on this free tier and here like we have to give the identifier to our database so i'm going to call it as ca server as of now ca server and here you have to give the database username and the password so by default uh, let's uh, keep the username as postgres and the password also as postgres confirm the password and here so machine type i'm going to use t2 micro because it's a free tab and uh, scroll down scroll down and here in the access type like i'm going to have the access type as public so that my ca instance can access it and then uh, these uh, vpc and networking settings like i'm going to keep default as is and uh, this authentication as password authentication now i can just create the database so it may take a couple of seconds uh, to create the database but meanwhile let's do one thing meanwhile this is creating let's set up our fabric ca as well so to set up the fabric ca like i am going to use the fabric samples and uh, for this demonstration part like i only need the fabric ca not the whole hyperledger fabric network so let's open this test network i am in my I'm in this fabric samples repository. So let's open this test network. And here in the organization, not here, here we have this Docker folder. And inside this, we have this Docker compose hyphen CA. And for this demonstration, like I'm going to have only one instance of fabric CA uh, because the aim of this video is to like show you how you can integrate Postgres and uh, CA and how our identities and certificates are going to store into the database. So let me just copy this part. And now let me just open my VS code. Yeah. And uh, let's do one thing. Let's just create a directory here first. And I will call it as fabric, uh, fabric CA playground. let's open this directory in the vs code uh, let's open this code fabric ca playground we are into this directory and let me close the other tab other vs code tab okay great so here we are and let's create the docker compose file Docker compose.yaml. Now let's just paste that configuration that we copied. 
So this is a default configuration uh, that we just copied. And now uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some modifications to this, uh, to this file. And the modification is only that, that here we are going to provide our custom fabric CA server config file that will have the configuration for, uh, for connecting the Postgres and storing all those uh, certificates to the Postgres. So let's open our uh, browser and let's grab that uh, fabric CA server config file. So here, uh, let's just move back and in this folder, in this organization folder, if I go to this folder fabric CA and in this folder, this one, this org one, I can choose this, this file as is and let me just grab this file. Let's just copy this and here let's create that file or let's create a folder. I will call it as fabric CA server. And inside this, we need a file, which is fabric C server config.yaml. I hope I have written the correct file name. Now let's just paste that. So this is fine. Now let's verify the file name as a fabric C A server config. Let me just verify this. Yeah, so the file name seems to be correct. Now in the Docker Compose, we can just give the name of this file. So I can do it like this. I can give, I can mount the entire folder. So, so here, uh, present directory and then this folder fabric. See, so. Okay, this looks fine. Now uh, let's run this. So, here is my item and let me just move to that folder. Let me just zoom. Yeah. So now uh, let's run the Docker Compose. So, and before that, like, uh, let me show you one thing. So in this Docker Compose, uh, the, the settings that I was talking about, like we have to upgrade the settings for the Postgres. So if you take a look at this file and here, if I just scroll down at this section, that this TV section here we have to provide the database type so here you can see the type the default type is uh, SQLite DB but uh, I want to give my uh, database as Postgres so I can just pass it here I can define the DB type as Postgres and here the source here I have to define the database string so let's uh, see uh, if that database creation is complete on the AWS or not so this is in backing up stage, but we can get the credentials here right now. So this is the endpoint that we will be going to use. And we already know the username and the password. And uh, one thing I just forgot to tell you is that uh, you have to go to this security groups here and you have to enable the port for Postgres. So that it can be accessed uh, from anywhere so if you go to this inbound rule like i have done this already and you can see uh, my postgres uh, port for postgres which is 5432 this is the default postgres port is allowed so that anyone uh, this port can be accessed from like any source so anyone can access this postgres and if you want to do this like just go to this edit inbound rule and here just click on this add new rule and here you can choose the you can type for postgres like you can uh, choose this and uh, it will show the port number here and then you can choose this option which is anywhere ipv4 and then you can just save this save this rule so uh, once you apply this rule then uh, you are uh, you can like basically connect to this postgres instance from anywhere like either from the any database client or from the fabric ca server as well so let's open this and here let's define the configuration so first let's define the host. So host I want to have is uh, what my this AWS gave me. So here is my host. Let me just copy this. This is my host. And then I want to define the port as well. So if you have any custom port, then you, then you can define, but by default, uh, uh, it will connect to port 5432, which is the default Postgres port. 
so let's give that port as 5432 and then uh, let's define the username and password so user is our postgres and password was also postgres and we have to define the database name as well so let's give the database name as db name equals to uh, what name we gave here so in the configuration so the database instance id is ca server so let's use this as database name ca server so let's define the sl mode as of now none uh, let me just shrink this and let's define the sl mode as none or disable let's define this as disable and uh, so now uh, let me tell you the different sl modes that are available so if we go to the postgres sl modes if we look for the postgres sl mode and uh, here is basically one chart which shows like what are the different postgres sl modes available and uh, uh, what are their uh, features so currently we are going to use the disable mode and then we will be also looking at like how we can set up this uh, this sl mode as the verify full so let's do this for disable now so here let me just do this disable and now let's try to run this so let's run this docker compose up hi let's do docker compose up so ca is creating and if you see here if you let's let's try to see the logs here so if you try to look at here so if you look at here it is failing to connect but if we scroll down uh, if you if you scroll time here you can see that now it got connected and uh, it is trying to create some tables to the database and we will take a look at those tables as well and uh, it has successfully added the admin as well so means it was successfully able to connect so now let's head back to the uh, postgres and see like what all tables it has created so i'm going to uh, go to the vs code here and uh, i have already installed one plugin uh, for VS Code extension, that is this one, Postgres, uh, so that I can connect to my Postgres instance, this one, and uh, I can get the icon here, and I can simply connect on this, so I have to get the connection string, so here, uh, let me just grab this connection string, let me just put it here, uh, the username I have to provide, so the username was Postgres, and the password was also Postgres, port is 5432 standard connection i'm going to choose and the database that we want to connect is ca server let's hit enter okay so seems it is connected and here we can see that we have all these tables that are uh, available to us we have this application table certificate table credentials no ends property revocation authority info and users now let's try to run a query and let's do select star from this uh, this table users table so here currently you can see that we have only one identity which is the bootstrap uh, identity uh, which our uh, fabric ca server used while enrolling while starting up the fabric ca server so this is the bootstrap identity and let's do select star on the certificate as well so let's see what is inside this certificates table so currently we have one default certificate so now let's try to uh, let's try to enroll Let's try to enroll a user. So for this, I am into my terminal. Let me split this. Let me split this here. And let me just get inside this terminal. This container basically, docker exe it. The container name should be... Okay, let's do docker ps first. docker exe hyphen it and then let's grab the container name and then i can do the bash 
So I'm inside the container now and let's try to enroll the admin user. So admin user currently is registered. It is not enrolled. So let's try to enroll them. So let's uh, grab the enrollment command as well. So if I go to the browser, here in this script, this is register enroll. Uh, we can find the enroll command as well. So before uh, doing the enrollment command, let me just create a folder here. So let's let's go to this directory first, etc hyperledger, and then fabric c server. And let me create one directory here, admin, because I want to keep the admin certificates here. And now uh, let's uh, just run this command. So here, uh, let me just update few things. So we are running this command, which is fabric c client enroll, and then hyphen u. And then uh, the username is admin and the password was admin pw, which is our bootstrap uh, username and the password. And the CA name is CA org1. And then here we have to pass the TLS search. So the TLS search is present inside this current directory. So let me just do back here and let me pass the correct path. So this, this is where my TLS search is present and I want to keep this certificate in some other directory. So let me pass the hyphen M flag and the, the directory where I want to put this, uh, my admin certificates is this directory, which is which the directory which I just created. So I can do present working directory slash admin. And if everything goes well, uh, we should see certificate there as well. So it is, it has successfully like enrolled the user and we can see that the client certificate was stored at this location. So inside this admin directory, we have the client certificate. And here also, if you see this, these logs carefully, our uh, user got enrolled successfully. And now if we try to go to the database and take a look, so let me open my VS code. Here is this VS code. Let me just check let me do select star on the certificates and here i should see the admin certificate as well because the admin has been enrolled successfully and we have generated the certificate as well for the admin so now uh, so now uh, let's try to connect the this postgres instance in sl mode so uh, with the, this with this authentication method which is this sl mode this is verify full let's try to do this uh, because we want to have the end-to-end -end encryption. Now to implement this, this, this SL mode, we need to have the root certificate. So root certificate we can get from the AWS. So let's go to the browser and here search for AWS RDS root certificate. Here, just open this first link. And based on the location, like you have to choose your certificate. So if I scroll down, there are a bunch of regions uh, that are available listed here. And I created this database instance in this region, which is Asia Pacific Mumbai. So I can download the certificate from here. But if you are into some other location or your database is basically created in some other region, then you have to choose a different, uh, di different certificate. So I'm in this Asia Pacific region. So let me choose this one. So let me just download this. Okay, so it has downloaded. Now uh, let's do one thing. Here, let me close these tabs. I don't need them. And let me just stop this as well, as of now. Let's just stop this. Because we will be again going to start this again. And here, uh, let's put that uh, certificate to this directory. That we just download so let me just move uh, bring that certificate here so i'm going to copy that so it is present inside this downloads slash user then downloads and then the certificate name was ap South India one bundle. Let me just copy this and I will call it as uh, let me just put this into this file only. 
uh, this fabric uh, ca server folder let's put it here and i will call it as root.crt or let's keep it as root.pam only so the certificate is here now and uh, let me just delete all these I don't need this as well. This this TLS certs I don't need. Okay, I have deleted all of them. And now if I go to this Fabric C server config, I can update my uh, SL mode. So we can get the SL mode. We have to use this SL mode as of now. This one SL verify full. So instead of SL, this time we are going to use this verify full SL mode. And also we have to pass the SL cert. So I can give that using this flag, which is SSL root cert. And the root cert I can find in this directory. Uh, this one etc slash hyperledger fabric, etc slash hyperledger slash fabric C. And I am mounting this directory inside the container so I can easily access that. So etc hyperledger. And then uh, we have fabric C fabric CS server and then the file name is root.pem so this seems fine to me uh, let's do one thing let's drop everything from the database so now let's try to uh, delete all these uh, data like whatever we have so let me open a new query tab here and let's truncate everything so truncate affiliations then second table that I have is certificates and the third one is credentials then next we have no inches properties and then revocation authority info and then users so let me just run this Seems like it is deleted. Let's do select star. Select star from users. Yeah, so it has deleted all the tables. So now let's try to run the Fabric C server again with uh, this time verify full SL mode. So head back to this thing. Let me exit out from here and now uh, let's run this docker compose up again so i can do docker compose up and this time also like if you can see we successfully got connected to uh, postgres uh, in this verification full method using verify full mode so that's all for this video and if you have any doubts then just please drop into the comment box i will definitely try to answer them and if you enjoyed this video then please give a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and uh, i will see you in the next one